Divination and witchcraft, are these the same as dowsing? And if they are, why might you be worried? We'll be looking at what the similarities and the differences are between these three labels and why it's up to you to decide whether or not this information that you're going to hear now affects your own particular way of seeing the world. And I'll also be offering you a little word of warning for those of you that are diving into this sort of energy work, this subtle energy work. If you think it's just for fun and can be done without understanding what you're doing, well, maybe think again. Hello there, my name is Tim Walter, I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. If you want to know more about connecting to the spiritual aspect of your life, and in particular to connecting to the spirit of place for enhanced well-being in your life, using techniques such as mindfulness, meditation and dowsing, then click subscribe, click on the grey bell icon and get notified every time we upload a video. So, divination and witchcraft. I'm going to talk about these things at the most basic level because what we're about here in this channel is working with the focus power of intent in all its forms. And I believe that doing that is absolutely crucial to understanding what it means to actually be a human being in all its senses. So at its most basic level, witchcraft is a structure with which to frame one's belief system. And in this sense, it's a container and a framework for focused thought, just as any religion is. I'm not judging religion or any individual belief system. I'm simply highlighting the way in which we as humans interact with our external world, whether that be visible or invisible. Religions have for centuries created a framework for that social structure, that interaction with the external world. And they've created that social structure and they've demanded in doing so that the masses are actually separated from their spiritual connection to the ultimate source of creation. They have been for eons by doing this, for eons they've been able to control thought. Now, as a Christian, I'm perhaps most familiar with Christian traditions and Christianity has clearly been very successful in corralling populations like sheep to think in certain ways so that society can function. But now that what we might call these traditional religions like Christianity have largely lost their grip on the populace, we're seeing the way that other religions and thought patterns and processes and belief systems such as paganism, witchcraft, and of course, the process that seems to be labeled under the religious title of new age thinking, whatever that is, are coming more and more to the fore. Witchcraft and spell casting works with the same underlying range of energies as prayer and focused intent in that both methods want to affect a change in the physical reality experienced either by the individual practitioner or on somebody else's behalf. Now there are differences of course in the energy forms that are being called upon and perhaps invoked in Christianity. Uh, they're very different to those that might be called upon for witchcraft, but fundamentally it's the same process. It's us as a human being working with the subtle energies. And it's up to us how we individually interact with those energies that we invoke and invite into our lives. And that's point number one. So what I'm saying is that witchcraft is fundamentally a belief system and it's often allied very closely to the natural world. And like all subtle energy work, it can be used for what we may term as either good or bad. Bear in mind, of course, that the terms good and bad can be applied to a massive range of actions and outcomes. And there are, they are also labels based upon subjective moral measures. Overall though, the moral standpoint to decide what is good and what is bad depends upon each individual. What one person considers to be good, another person may consider to be bad. Traditionally, of course, religions such as Christianity positioned the natural world as being the creation of God. They would see the hand of God in action on a daily basis and often they would use what they observed as signs that God was directly addressing them. 
Holy men and women would consult the natural world for portents and signs, such as the flight paths of birds, or even the way that freshly disemboweled entrails would pulse when removed from a sacrificial animal. That was a particular favourite for the ancient Greeks. And they used to call this process the study of divine signs, or divination. Now today, divination is often defined as the attempt to predict the future using paranormal means. So are divination and witchcraft linked? And where does dowsing sit with these two activities? Well, as we've seen, witchcraft is about far more than just trying to predict the future. And like any other belief system, it's a way of life. Divination may be part of that way of life. How a person lives their life is variable within the framework they've chosen to reflect their values and beliefs. So what I'm saying is that witchcraft is a framework for somebody to live their belief system by. In the same way as druidry, for example, is a framework for somebody to live their belief system by. Dowsing can be used for divination, of course, and may indeed be used as part of a person's witchcraft work, but dowsing is not a way of life in itself. It's a process. I mean, admittedly, it's a very flexible process, and it enables a dowsing practitioner to find out all sorts of information from the supposedly invisible world, but it isn't a belief system. But is dowsing divination? Is it a way of telling the future? Well, it can be used to try to predict the future. But dowsing, when used as a time-based process, is quite tricky to pin down. Some people can do it, and some people can do it a lot better than others. I'm a, what I would call a spiritual dowser, and I find it very difficult to actually get good, solid, reliable, time-based details about the future. But like I say, it's not to say that it's not possible, but it is up to you to try to find out and see it if it works for you. You might have a knack for it. Uh, some people do. Now, finally, that word of warning that I mentioned earlier. Protect yourself. All of this work has to be done safely. And once you start to work with what we might call the magical energies, the spiritual energies, you're starting to work with energies that are new to you. You haven't been trained in them. We don't talk about this sort of relationship to the subtle energies around us when we're growing up. It's just not taught. It used to be mystical. It used to be taught in secret societies. But now, of course, more and more people are awakening spiritually and coming to, to realize that they actually have quite a profound effect upon the world around them. And therefore, you must treat all of this stuff carefully. It has to be done safely. And the best way, the best place to start with a safety process is to use a chakra protection exercise. And there'll be a link in the comments section below. Magical energy, mystical energy, it's spiritual energy. And it's not something to be played with. It's not a game. So I hope that some of this has been of help and maybe it's allayed any fears that you may have had about whether dowsing is related to witchcraft or divination. These things that perhaps you've heard are not good things. Really, what you hopefully have taken away from this little video is that actually it's up to you to decide whether it's good or bad, whether you use it for good or bad. That is up to you. What we're doing here is to introduce you to the concept that actually you need to take responsibility for your energy. Simple as that. And if you'd like to know more about that sort of thing and about working with these spiritual energies, then please do take a look at the videos featured on the end card coming up right now. Take care. Bye-bye.